When I first began fishing a couple of years ago, I started off by targeting salmon and steelhead in the rivers around Vancouver Island. Now my husband, he gifted me a spinning rod and that was the first setup that I started to use. And in my fishing career in the last um, few years, it's been my favorite setup. Now this is because it's really effective when targeting salmon and steelhead and, and other species. Uh, we usually swing lures and uh, cast and retrieve them in rivers and lakes. But also it's, it's my favorite because it's one of the easiest methods to start off with. Uh, really, really great setup for those who are just being uh, introduced to the sport. So in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to properly rig the, the spinning setup for salmon and steelhead fishing. So the line that I choose to have on my spinning reel is braided line. Now, the first reason that I like it is because it is quite a bit thinner um, than other lines. So this means that it will actually cast quite a bit further and it doesn't get stuck in any of the eyelets when casting and it's very, very helpful. Uh, the second reason is memory. So braided line, um, it won't form certain, I guess, knots or if your line gets tangled, it won't kind of stay in that knot that you, you've created. Um, in fact, it actually comes out a lot easier. So uh, you won't have all these, the line will be as, as messy. Uh, the third reason that I like braided line is because it's a lot stronger. So mono, for instance, is, it's quite a bit stretchier. So it's actually easier to fill the bites on braided line because it's not as stretchy, whereas mono, uh, the bites, you don't fill them as instant. So now for our, our leader, we're going to be using Seaguar Floral Carbon. Now I prefer Seaguar Floral Carbon over mono just because it is a lot thinner. Um, it's a lot stiffer and it also, it doesn't reflect any sunlight. So it's really good for those clear conditions, um, really invisible to the fish and it won't spook them as easy. So when I'm taking my leader, what I usually do is I actually stretch my arms out twice. So I pull it from the rear, pull it from the spool once, twice, and that is the amount of leader that I use when I'm attaching uh, lures to my line. The first knot I'm going to be showing you is the perfection loop. Now, the reason I actually join my lines together with a knot is so that I don't need a swivel. Uh, if you had a swivel joining your main line to your leader, it actually couldn't travel up the eyelets and you wouldn't be able to have as long a, of leader as you wish um, because if you had your, your swivel to the top eyelet, you'd have to swing the whole leader instead of having maybe a, a shorter bit of line to cast out. So it actually makes your casting uh, much easier and you're spending less money on tackle. So the first thing you're going to do with this, with your, your knot, is uh, you're going to actually take your piece, pinch, and you're going to um, kind of double up on the line and wet it. So it sticks down and it doesn't move, okay? So once you have your line and it's a little bit wetter, you're going to make, you're gonna form a loop. And I'll make these loops a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. Um, normally you'd want them to be really small just so that uh, they don't actually catch on the, the eyelets. So you have your loop, you're gonna pinch, take the line, bring it around behind the loop, pinch again, and you want, so you're forming a second loop and you want them to be the same size. So I have two loops here. Now you have your little tag piece that is going to go in between the two loops. Okay. Now the loop that was in the back, you're actually going to slide it through that first loop and then pull your tag. Now it looks a little bit messy, but you actually can just clip it off. So you can see here, I have my two loops. Looks like that. And these are just all extra pieces. You can take a, a knife too, or scissors if you have them, or nail clippers, and just carefully trim those tags off. So there you go, you have your perfection loop. So now you're going to do the same thing with your leader. You're going to make only one loop this time. So take your line, make a loop, and you want it to be about that size, nothing too big. You're gonna take your tag, wrap around the back, pinch it with your thumb, and you want the loops to be the same size. With your tag, you're going to slip it in between the two loops, pinch again with your thumb, and then that loop from behind, you're gonna pull through the first loop and slowly pull. In there. I just usually stick my pinky in the loop and to give that extra pull. Sometimes I'll even take the my zipper and I'll just make sure that I slide it through to pull it so it's extra tight. You have your tag. You want to lose that so it doesn't get caught on 
anything when you're casting. And there you go, you have your perfection loop. So now that we have our two knots created on both our braided and our uh, leader line, I'm going to show you how to connect them together. So this is where the cool part happens. So this part is called the loop to loop connection. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your leader line, that loop is going to slide over your braided loop, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to slide your fingers down the leader until you reach the end and you're going to slide it through the braided loop. That end and slowly pull. Uh, if you pull too fast, sometimes it might work, sometimes it might not. Uh, what I mean by that is it might catch on the other knot. So you just want to go nice and slow until they both slide. And there you have uh, your loop to loop connection. So now we have our, our braid and our leader attached and we can add our lure. So I'm just using uh, the improved clinch knot. This knot is great just because it's, it's really easy. This was my very first knot that I learned when I first started fishing. And it only gets stronger when fish bite down on the lures. So the fish pull in one direction, you pull in the other, and the knot just gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And uh, yeah, it shouldn't, it shouldn't break. So there you have it. Our, our spinning setup is all ready to go, ready to go fishing. Now, if you have any other methods of uh, attaching lines together for spinning setups, you can please let us know in the comments. I would love to hear it. And uh, hopefully, if this works out for you, let us know that as well. And uh, good luck fishing.